Hello friends. This video is brought to you by MyWayTeaching.com. Let us start with data handling. Firstly, we will study pictograph, bar graph, pie graph, and histogram. Then we shall discuss organizing data and grouping data. And finally, we will introduce you to chance and probability. Pictograph Before drawing a pictograph, let us understand what is data. The information collected in context of a situation that we want to study is called data. A pictograph is the representation of data using symbols. Let us consider an example. A teacher collects data of the height of students of 7th standard, 8th standard and 9th standard. She ends up with a huge data and now she wants to organize it and depict it pictorially. She decides to use a star to depict to depict that height of 10 students is above 5 feet. Then she marks one star in the 7th standard which implies that only 10 students have the height above 5 feet in the 7th standard. For the 8th class, she marked 2 stars implying that 20 students in the 8th standard have height above 5 feet. She marked 2 and a stars implying that 25 students in the 9th standard are above 5 feet. And finally, the teacher ends up with this graph which represents the data in terms of a symbol which she chose to be a star. And such a graph is called a pictograph. A bar graph is used to show comparison among categories. Let us try to understand this by using an example. Consider a student A. And let us say we have that student A scored in first terminal exams he scored 40 percent marks in the second term he scored 50 percent marks and in the third term he scored 60 percent marks now we can compare his marks using a bar graph and let us see how to draw that bar graph. Let us start by drawing a bar graph for our example. Take a graph paper and mark x-axis and y-axis on it. On x-axis we mark the terms, first term, second term and third term taking 2 cm as one unit and on the y axis we will mark percentage of marks starting with 0, 0 and 1 cm equal to 10 percent. Since student A got 40% marks in the first term so we know 
that our bar has to be somewhere here. Let us draw the bar. On drawing the bar, we get the figure like this. He scored 50% in second term. So let us try and mark for the second term 50% and then we shall draw the bar graph. So now let us draw the bar graph. On drawing the bar, now our graph looks like this. It has got two bars and in the second term he has scored more marks. So the bar is taller. Now let us proceed for the third term. We know that he scored 60% marks. So this time our graph has to be somewhere here and now let us draw the bar on drawing the bar for the third term finally our graph looks like this and it is easily visible that he has made improvement in his marks from first term he got better in the second term and even better in the third term a double bar graph is used to compare two set of data simultaneously. Let us take an example. Let us make a graph of the marks obtained by the student in maths, social science and English in the year 2011-2012 and 2012-2013. If we depict yellow bar meaning the marks obtained in 2011-2012 from the graph we can see that in maths in the year 2011-2012 the child scored 60% marks while in the year 2012-2013, he scored 75% marks. Similarly, he scored 55% marks in 2011-2012, but he could only score 40% marks in 2012-2013 in social sciences. While in English, both the years 2011-12 and 12-13, he scored same marks, that is 55% marks. And seeing the graph, we can conclude that the student made good progress in maths from 2012 to 2013. He deteriorated his marks in social sciences and gave the same performance as 2012-2013 in English. Histogram A histogram is a bar graph that shows data in intervals. There are no gaps between the bars because there are no gaps between the intervals. Let us consider an example. Suppose we conduct a survey in a town and try to find out the comparison between the weights and the number of children who fall in that weight. Then Suppose we find out that children weighing from 40 to 45 kg are 15. Children weighing between 45 to 50 kg are 30. Children weighing from 50 to 55 kg are 40. Children weighing from 55 to 60 kg 
are thirty five, and children weighing from sixty to sixty five kg are twenty five. To draw a histogram, let us start by taking a graph paper and plot x axis and y axis. Also on the x axis, mark a jagged line, showing that we are not marking the weights from zero to forty kg, and we are straight away starting from forty kg. Note we are taking weights in kg on the x axis, and number of children on the y axis. Then we start plotting our graph for weight from forty to forty-five kg. Number of children is fifteen, so it comes somewhere here. We mark this line, and then we draw the rectangle. Similarly, for the weights from forty-five to fifty kg. We have number of children thirty, so we mark thirty line and complete the rectangle, and so on. Finally, after marking for all the values, we get this graph, which is called a histogram. Here we can see that there are no gaps. There are no gaps between bars, because there were no gaps between the intervals in our data also from the graph we can see that maximum number of children that is 40 lie in the weight range of 50 to 55 kg while the minimum number of children that is 15 lie in the weight range of 40 to 45